the first thing I usually do when I'm making a costume like this that's a little bit more modern is find as many good pictures as I can, really analyze every piece, and figure out if there's any piece of it that might be something that I can buy already made um, to save myself a little bit of time and um, you know the extra effort of having a seamstress custom make something that might not need to be. So she wears these pleather leggings and I was able to find these on Amazon that are pretty much the perfect color. They are gonna get distressed and um, you know have some um, alterations made to them but they are a really good jumping off point and I'm gonna take those with me when I'm fabric shopping for the rest of it today. Um, she also wears these biker gloves. I couldn't find any that were even close to the right color so I figured it'd be safer to get white and then we're gonna paint them um, so that they can be the same tone and everything as um, the rest of the costume. And these shoes are, are pretty close to the right color. They're kind of um, more pink in real life, um, but they're gonna end up getting painted and distressed anyway. Um, and the rest we are going to have to have custom made. So we are gonna go downtown and shop for fabrics. So we are here in downtown LA in the fabric district and I'm gonna be looking for a bunch of different fabrics today for all of the pieces that need to be custom made like her sequin shirt and the cape and all of that. So a bunch of different beaded sequin fabrics. The really cool thing about downtown LA is there are also lots of places that have like accessories. So I'm gonna be looking for possibly her crown or pieces to put together a crown for her. Some rhinestones probably. I uh, have a whole bunch of stuff to look for today, so it's going to be a adventure. So, so far it's proving to be a challenge to find the exact fabrics. Um, so what will probably happen is for the next couple hours, I'll be a perfectionist and keep looking for the exact fabrics. but. If I can't find them, then I may have to settle and find something that's close enough, which I do not like to do. So this is the fabric that I ended up picking out for the shirt. It's not exactly the accurate pattern, which I was really hoping to find, but it is mesh and has embroidery and sequins and is the perfect color. So um, I think it'll look great. It just, I looked everywhere for the exact fabric and could not find it. because my phone died and downtown closes up around now. So I unfortunately, I'm gonna have to come back. Um, I did find a good number of things that I needed to get started, but not everything. So um, I'll show you guys what I got and I'm gonna get started when I get home. And 
her pants um, are kind of ombre, like they get more black as you go to the bottom, so I'll start down there. so imperfect like you can't really go wrong but you should go more on the light side so that it's not you know you don't get like a big blob of black paint where you don't want it Now we are going to paint and distress the shoes. Um, I did buy these rose gold kind of shoes hoping that they would be the perfect color, but since they're not, um, we're gonna paint them to be more of the right tone to match the rest of the costume. And even though they're not the perfect color, I still recommend when you buy pieces already made that you get pieces that are close to the right color because then you're creating less work for yourself when it comes to painting. Um, and definitely never buy black. Black is almost impossible to paint over. Um, so we're gonna paint over with this pearl first and then we're gonna just start painting shoes. You wanna do really light layers and be patient and let them dry before adding another layer because if you lay on your paint too thick, it can get cracked and flake off. So what I'm finding with this particular costume is that the black distressing is looking really harsh against the light pink. So letting the black distressing dry and then adding another layer of pink is really helping mute it a little bit and it has kind of a more deliberate finished look and I'm super happy with it. Okay, 
So this is our base crown with all of the little top thingies broken off. And so the next part is going to be attaching these blue thingies. And these are the other trims that I bought. Um, I noticed even if this is the same base crown that they use or not, this um, her crown is much taller than this. So I think what they did is they added um, another chain um, that kind of peaks below where this crown ends so that it's a little bit taller. And then with these uh, little gold pieces that I bought that are kind of like gold-plated crackers to me, <laughs> um, they're gonna make it a little bit more sturdy when we glue it all together. So this is my first time making anything like this. Um, we'll see how it goes. I am gonna be using this industrial strength glue that I'm such a big fan of. Um, but when you're gluing something as heavy as metal to each other, um, the only tip I can really give is that you have to kind of let it get tacky before you try to attach one thing to the other. And you have to hold it until it's ready to be let go.
hi so it's me many months later uh, I realized I did not do a very good job describing how I made the skirt because I was in such time crunch to get it done that I didn't have time to film but I actually did not sew any of it I glued all of the feathers and the top layer uh, overlay fabric to pink satin I didn't even have a pattern I literally just kind of winged it I drew out the shape of a skirt um, and just kept editing it until it looked right um, I did more of the distressing with a sponge and then once everything was glued down I attacked it with some light pink spray paint and that's how it kind of got the look that it has um, it was truly like trial and error so hopefully that helps 